What better thing to do in an Oklahoma summer? Go cut down a tree. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Easy Wood Tools. Best in class carbide wood turning tools. It has been a long time since we've cut down a tree and so I want to go over a couple basics because you just need some equipment with you when you do take a tree down that are very important to have. You might not think you need all this stuff, but obviously you need a chainsaw and you need one with a blade long enough to attack the tree that you're going after. The one we're going after today is about 12 inches in diameter so we're good with a 14 inch chainsaw. Then you absolutely need a helmet. You got to have face protection and hearing protection because it does get loud. The other important thing is you need a really good pair of chaps and so you can make a mistake with the chainsaw. This material in here is going to bind up the blade so it doesn't hurt you. You got to have a pair of these. If you don't, you could be in a lot of trouble. This is a brand new pair because I did put a slice in with my old pair and so you should replace them once you do that. Now for the smaller stuff, you obviously need lubricant for your bar for your chainsaw. Then you're also going to need chainsaw gasoline and <laughs> oil mix. You don't want to run out. And then this is sealer, wood sealer. We're going to paint that on the end of the wood so it won't crack. But before we get to that point, we want to make sure that when we take the tree down, we're going to be using some wedges. If it's the right size, we're going to need these. Then you're going to need an old rusty ax to pound those in and that'll help you fell the tree. Oh yeah, and the brushes, that's for the wood sealer. And then the gloves, obviously you want to protect your hands. So a viewer of ours, Kevin, called me and he said, I've got this red bud tree with some burls on it that I've got to take down. And he's right. This is really cool. It's pretty tall for a red bud, too. In Oklahoma, you know, they get about 10, 15, 20 feet tall, and this is bigger than that. Uh, while we're back here, one thing I like to do is I look at the tree and I put my arm up to where my, I'm looking at the top of my hand, and it's at the top of the tree. You probably don't see that angle that well. But then I just do this. And it gives me an idea where it's going to fall, and it's going to fall right next to these trees here. Kevin said, don't worry about them. They're fruit trees that didn't do their job, so they're on the execution block too. <laughs> I don't need fruit wood today, though, but that's an opportunity I have down the line. But let's look at this tree because it's really intriguing. A lot of times you get stuff like this, and it's just bark. But there might be some really cool burls in this thing. This tree had a really wild life. And when you look up higher, it's got nice crotch wood up there. And then I do see what could be a really good burl up there on the left. Also, we want to look above us. We see some dead branches. Those are called widow makers. You got to watch out for those. That's why you wear a helmet. Keeps you nice and safe. So I think we're about ready to start doing some cutting. So I want to lock my blade here. That keeps the blade from turning when I start it because it's going to be on the ground. And I don't want to get dirt in the chain, which would hurt it up. Hurt it up, mess it up a bit. So I got this ready to go. We'll see how it works. You got to pull it twice or three times. There we go. I'm going to move this up one notch. There it is. <laughs> Make sure you have your helmet on good. It's uh, almost 90 degrees already. It's about 9 in the morning. Welcome to Oklahoma summer. So now you see the blade's not turning. When I blew, bring this back, click it back, now the blade turns. So now we're rocking and rolling. First thing I want to do is get rid of this branch here because it's in the way of the cut I want to make. Now we got to get rid of this branch. And it did it anyway. Looks good. Well, crap! <laughs> Look at our first cut here. We want to make a wedge right here, take this off, and we'll have a big burl right here that I'm going to kind of lose. Maybe not. If I make my cut right, I want to make a 70 degree pie cut coming down like this, and then a cut across like this. That might pop out. We might be able to save that piece of wood. <laughs> and, and Kevin lied to me. He said 12 inches. Ah! This is a 14 inch bar. I think we're a little bit bigger than that. I would have brought my bigger chainsaw if I'd known that. But anyway, we'll make this cut first. It's going to be a little bit loud. And uh, oh, yeah, one thing I forgot to mention. If you do have a second chainsaw, make sure you bring it because if you get that stuck in the tree, how do you get it out? You need another chainsaw to relieve that cut. So let me get this turned on, put up, and we're going to make that first 70 degree cut from the top here. Before I fire up, see this line right here on my chainsaw? 
most chainsaws or all chainsaws either have this or another guide. What you do is you take this and aim it the direction you want the tree to fall. So if I want to make the tree fall that way is where I want to go. I keep this lined up like that when I make this cut. It's a very handy guide. So we'll get this started here and make our first cut. Okay, you see I've cut down to here, I'm about a quarter of the way through the tree, and I got a straight line across to here on this side where the cut is. So now my job is to get a straight cut coming across this way and pop this wedge out. So you have to be careful in positioning your chainsaw when you do it. Make sure you're lined up and take your time. Okay, we saved it. It's gonna be pretty interesting. We're a little thick here, we can't quite see the burl. I do see a little bit of rot here, so we gotta be really careful with this tree and take our cut slow and make sure we keep everybody out of the way. That means Brian. <laughs> okay, we're on the last cut and it's the most important because the tree's gonna fall that way, right? Well, first thing I need to think of is where am I gonna go? You don't wanna go behind it because if the tree kicks out, you could be in big trouble. I'm gonna take this chainsaw and go over here to get safely out of the way. There is a fence here, but it's far enough back, it's not gonna affect me getting away from that, hopefully. The tree, though, if you look up at the top, has big branch on this side. So we're gonna really have to work hard to get that to go the direction we want it to go. So ideally, what I'm gonna do, I won't be stopping when I do this, so I'll tell you now. I'm gonna make a cut in here. Once the chainsaw gets in here far enough, I'm gonna grab a wedge, drive that wedge in there to make sure it's pushing the tree that way. As I go in deeper, I'm gonna do another wedge. Ideally, we'd have a rope attached to the top of this thing and somebody pulling on that end. Uh, Kevin mentioned he has a tractor, but it'd probably take a little too long to get it hooked up. Famous last words. If it does go this way, I'm gonna have to help Kevin do some fence work. <laughs> but anyway, this is gonna be a cut that's gonna come in just about an inch or so above that bottom of that wedge I made, and I'm not gonna cut it all the way through. I need to leave a thick enough piece of wood going across that way for a hinge. That's really important. You cut all the way through, this thing just drops down and it goes anywhere at once. The hinge is gonna make it go the direction we want, hopefully. That went really good. Okay, now the hard part starts. We gotta cut this thing up. This is why you only do this in the fall, not in the summer. <laughs> Kevin was nice enough to say he'll use this as firewood because it is kind of dried out and rotted out. But I'm kind of interested from where the first burl starts here and work on our way down. So I want to limb up a little bit, put my ears on, start up here. Let's see. <laughs> There we go. You just want to take the little branch. You just want to take the little branches off. They're going to be in the way you're making your big cuts. I cut a piece of wood off because I want to put it under this trunk as much as I can. So when I start cutting it, it 
the trunk doesn't go straight to the ground. I don't want the blade touching the dirt, which would mess it up. That's kind of okay. That should work. <laughs> but anyway, I want to start my first cut right here. I'm going to cut up under it. Now I'm going to cut down on it. I'll probably come back up under it to finish the cut. There's pressure on it the way it's laying right now. But then the log's going to move. This looks like my best chance at a burl. It's really cool. So I'm going to cut this section off. I'm going to probably cut it here and then cut here. You know, this works a lot better when you put this thing down. You don't get as so much stuff in your face. <laughs> Um, the next thing I want to show you is a bucking cut, and it's what these little sharp dagger-like things are for on the chainsaw. Is when you're cutting a piece of wood that's really thick, you can take this and they dig into the wood and they give you leverage. What we have right here is a great crotch, right? I want to save it from about here to here because it'll make a really nice bowl out of it. So I'll use a bucking cut to take this wing off of the crotch. From the looks of this, it's either raining or I'm trying to make a dirty phone call. <sighs> Whew, that's a lot of work. Doesn't look like it, but it really is. Now, I was doing some stuff that wasn't quite normal for my cuts. I still have to cut this branch off to get this crotch here. But when you're cutting a tree and you want to make straight bowls from it, this diameter transferred over here, see it's wider than it is long now. You want to make this at least 20% longer on the ends because if the wood starts to crack, which it will no matter what you do, it will go into that wood and you'll waste that whole piece of log that you got. The other thing I was doing which was different was I was trying to save the burls. Why cut a big log and keep the log when all I need is this part right here? So the next thing we need to do though is we have to seal up all this end grain so the water doesn't leak out and cause cracking. Water, that sounds good. <laughs> I'm not sweeping or cleaning, but I'm trying to get as much of the shavings out of my irregular chainsaw cuts I did because the sawdust in there will keep the sealer from sealing. And I think this is anchor seal. The uh, Northeastern Oklahoma Wood Turners Association, which I'm a member of, buys this in 55 gallon drums and then they break it up to sell it at a better price. And it's just like thick stuff. It looks like thick latex paint, but it's not. It's much better than latex. This has more ability to flex and soak in at the same time. Now normally you don't do the side grain, which is this is the inside of the tree, but since I want to keep this burl safe as long as I can, this is my biggest one, I'm going to take extra precautions and cover anything that I uncovered. So put a little good splash on there. Now the end grain is the most important part. You want to soak that on really nice and thick and you can see how punky it is in spots and that's going to soak it up. I'll probably put two coats, maybe three coats on this. And that chainsaw cut there made it really difficult. There, I got it inside. But anyway, this is what I do to all the remaining wood. So those are the steps to cutting down a tree. 
and how to save the wood for use later. The thing you do want to do when you get this home, don't put it in the sun, put it in a climate controlled environment or put it under a tarp or something off the ground. If you put it off the ground, we won't have rotten moisture going up into it unless you want to spot your wood and that's a whole nother show. So anyway, that's how you cut down a tree. Until the next time on wood turning, I'm going to hydrate and you keep turning. <laughs> Whew. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Easy Wood Tools. Best in class carbide wood turning tools.